Part of your aim here is to have this broad discussion that you hope then translates into action that everybody agrees on, people that are broadly agreed on uh, certain aspects of essentially three things that are all the same thing, corporate welfare, uh, crony capitalism, and uh, corporatism. So broadly, what are those things? Well, they, they all reflect excessive power by concentrated corporate institutions, increasingly uh, multinational, over our government. And they reflect the strategic planning of corporations representing commercial interests into area after area of our life. Uh, some of them should never be invaded by commercialism. Uh, corporations have commercialized childhood. They undermine parental authority, direct marketing to three, four, five, eight, nine, ten year olds, food and drink that's not good for them, violent programming. We know all about that. Uh, but we say, why are they doing that? It's just, it's against our morals. It's against uh, parental control over children. But what does that have to do with uh, the government issuing privileges to yes. corporations, and more yeah. directly? Yeah, what it does is that these messages are over the public airways where the licenses are given by the Federal Communications Commission to broadcasters. And we own the public airways. We're the landlords, and the broadcasters are the tenants. They pay nothing for the license, and they decide what's said 24 hours a day. Well, I think we need to protect young children. In Western Europe, for decades, they wouldn't allow commercials beamed to young children because they can't distinguish you know, between program and advertising. But there are other areas. Corporations are strategically planning our elections. There's money in politics, floating their candidates. They're strategically planning the way our government operates and how tax dollars are collected and how tax dollars are spent. Corporations are geniuses, underpaying their tax taxes. And some of the big ones don't pay any federal income tax on billions of U.S.-based pro profits like General Electric and Verizon. And they go to these tax havens abroad. They are intruding into the educational realm. Now, a, a just society subordinates commercialism to the supremacy of civic and, and humane and spiritual values. That's the only way. You can basically convey the following principle. Markets are great servants, but bad masters. Well, isn't that, that's true of government too, right? That's true. You can't have, if you have too much of any one of those power centers, you're going to have abuse. But when you have them converge, where corporations and government increasingly are indistinguishable, and that's what's called crony capitalism. Handouts, subsidies, giveaways, <laughs> bailouts. Well, let, 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 me, yeah. let me connect with that then. What good is corporate power without government power? Corporate power without government power would have to adhere to market disciplines. With government power, they can overcome market disciplines, Wall Street damaging Main Street, big business damaging small business. Right, so corporate power leveraging government power, that's the problem? That's the big problem. Okay, well, so the, liber the libertarian argument yeah. is one of reducing government power, so there yes. simply are not these benefits to be handed out to these big corporations. Um, which I fully agree. I, I, I could give them uh, 150 programs of subsidies, handouts, giveaways, unfair discriminatory allocations to whoever corporations have influence on Capitol Hill compared to those who don't, abolish them. I've often said that half of what Washington does is as an accounts receivable shoveling out goodies on the backs of taxpayers uh, to business interests. So, and I would also be extremely uh, uh, opposed to government waste. I think even good programs uh, uh, accrete waste. It's the nature of bureaucracy. It's, by the way, corporate bureaucracy as well as, sure. as, well as government bureaucracy. I, the longtime chairman of the Cato Institute here, here uh, Bill Niskanen, yeah. wrote his uh, important work, Bureaucracy, after having spent many years in the belly <laughs> of the beast at the Pentagon. Yeah. So he's, he saw a lot of that firsthand. And, you know, when I was studying GM, uh, I, I found it took eight, there were 18 tiers to go from the factory floor to the CEO's office. And GM's bureaucracy is a good deal uh, responsible for this latest uh, ignition switch scandal. So for leftists and libertarians, I think there's a big difference in how they are likely to view the proper way 
to diffuse what you call corporate power. Let me discuss. Sure, okay. please. First of all, I think they agree on access to the courts, uh, libertarians and uh, liberal and progressives. And access to the courts is being increasingly expensive and increasingly restricted procedurally by corporate lawyers. And that's what they do for a living. Uh, number two, I think this huge so, uh, convergence on obeying the Constitution when it comes to unconstitutional wars and wars of empire and bloated military uh, budgets. Uh, there is a reason why Ron Paul got together with Barney Frank when they were in the House of Representatives and actually staffed an entity to take on the bloated military budget and how it's used with adventures overseas. So I think, you know, we can differ on a number of things, but these are big things to start chewing on together. You've talked a little bit about uh, today, it was mentioned several times at the event, uh, the problem of what you see as constitutional rights being ascribed to corporations. Yes. Now, what, what rights specifically are you talking about? Yes. Uh, for example, th they have the right to go bankrupt, as anybody does, but they have preferential rights. That is, they can keep paying their executives, they can reemerge unlike a real human being, they can reemerge in different forms, they can get subsidized in order to reemerge. That's what happened with the auto companies, that's what happened with Citigroup, that's what happened with AIG, see? So uh, that's just one difference in, in bankruptcy. But, for example, corporations can create their own parents in order to evade federal laws. That's called holding companies. Individuals can't create their own parents. Corporations can stamp their feet and say if they don't get their way in the U.S. from lawmakers, they'll quit the uh, United States of America, where they rose to profit and to power, and go to some autocratic regime that, you know, give them what they want for a little grease. So uh, I, what I'm saying is there is a huge double standard uh, proliferating now uh, between the privileges and immunities of corporations and the rights of real individuals. And I believe, just like I believe only human beings should be allowed to vote, and we have that in law, corporations can't vote yet, but I don't think the Constitution should give equal rights to corporations, that, which are artificial entities. We're not talking about their employees. These are artificial entities equal to the rights of real people because corporations have a huge advantage to go globally and amass power and throw their influence around <clears throat> for immunity, which individuals simply can't do. Even a billionaire uh, can't do that. And I don't think it's a fair contest uh, to expect equal rights under the law and equal protection of the law between large corporations and ordinary human beings. Now, I, I see a distinction here, and I'll, let me try to draw it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about sort of artificial new rights that individuals do not possess that are being ascribed to corporations. Yes. What I, in, in the spirit of the question, I was talking about rights that individuals do possess and extending those into corporations that they own. For example, you can't kick in the door of a business yes. uh, because somebody owns that business. Yes. It's their stuff, yes. and you can't kick in the door and take stuff. Well said. Uh, in other words, property rights. Uh, for property example, rights? Property rights. Yes. See, I think corporations should be prohibited, as corporations, from making political contributions, from political lobbying, and from engaging in the electoral system. That should be reserved for real human beings, conservative, libertarian, anarchists, <laughs> liberals, progressives. Uh, when it comes to property rights, which basically reflect the activities of people, Yes. I mean, you, you shouldn't be able to confiscate without compensation uh, a corporate property, um, and, and that would be protected. But it's the political rights. It's, it's the rights to have a bigger megaphone than you or I that really uh, is very upsetting. For example, you don't have a radio station. I don't have a radio station. In fact, I don't know if individuals can even own radio stations. I think they've got to be corporations. But it's in the hands of seven or eight giant conglomerates who are singing to the same tunes. And they're using our public property, the public airwaves, just like mining companies use our public lands and get hard rock minerals essentially free, gold, molybdenum, 
silver. All I have to pay for a $9 billion gold mine, an actual case, owned by Barrick Gold Company in Canada. They got $9 billion worth of our gold in Nevada on public lands for 30000 bucks under the 1872 Mining Act. All right. Well, let, let me let me take up that yeah. issue again. You're talking about political yeah. rights. Yeah. You, it's clear you do, do not like the Citizens United decision. No. You said that it was uh, procedurally bad. Yeah. But but also uh, wrong headed. Yes. Um, but you also talk about it making it easier for people to organize yes. for political action and almost exclusively, like for example, George Soros can spend as much as he wants promoting an idea yes. or uh, a candidate without using certain words. Yes. Um, Oprah Winfrey could do the same thing. Uh, David Koch, Charles Koch could do the same thing. But the minute those two people get together before the Citizens United decision, those people were effectively had to buy into this huge uh, regime of regulation, FEC regulation, that uh, for any two average people would be absolutely in- incredibly difficult for them to actually uh, organize raise money, spend money, stay within the Byzantine systems of law, system of laws that we have in our electoral system. And uh, Citizens United basically argued that a lot of that is, is illegit. A lot of that regulation is simply illegitimate. So I feel like that decision has a, has a great power to empower small groups of people banding together to uh, speak to the public. You, no, you disagree. The, is that no, right? Well, by the same token, like I, I ran for president, and the first thing I was told by people at the FEC uh, that I need to have one full-time person to comply with FEC regulations. I mean, I was lucky to get five sure. full-time persons for the campaign. You see, it, the, I think a problem you might be alluding to is a lot of these reforms are gamed by big, powerful interests who have lawyers and can pay lawyers, and the little guy is disadvantaged, like the mortgage deduction a great proportion that goes to wealthy homeowners or the farmers program goes to big farmers and agribusiness. So too, in the electoral arena, we are seeing these regulations. They may irritate the big guys, but the big guys know how to game it and they can pay for it. And the little guys can't do that. That's why people have so few candidates on the ballot because small party independent candidates, they just can't negotiate this web of Regulations. I'll give you an example. The regulations of the FEC for matching funds is a booklet this thick, just for matching funds. Now, how can an independent candidate, you know, have a chance of that lucky to pay for the rent and for staff? This reminds me of mm-hmm. Eugene McCarthy. Mm-hmm. This was somebody who yeah. didn't didn't have money of his own, uh, used the money of a bunch of rich friends, and was able to. Uh, run on a platform, uh, an anti-Vietnam platform, it, and that just wouldn't be possible today. Yes, it would, actually. What, uh, please uh, explain. Y- uh, yes, because now uh, corporations can can give independently, but uh, they can Independent support. Independent expenditures, yes. Yeah, th- th- as long as they don't collaborate with a McCarthy-type campaign, they can grease the wheels for any candidate that they want or uh, oppose any candidate that they want. Now, a candidate who happens to be very rich can spend as much, sure. like Michael Bloomberg, as much as much as he wants. Just like now a corporation under Citizens United can spend endlessly to oppose or support. My point is, where's the balance here for the little guys, for the new movements that need to sprout, they need to be given like seeds in nature. They need to be given a chance to sprout. In the first cycle, they may not get many votes, but they have a chance in the second election cycle. That's why I think all ballot qualified candidates should have a certain amount of time on broadcast TV and radio as part of the license that the FCC gives to private corporations to control that time 24 hours a day. This so, is not fair. So we own the public airways, and we can't get any time on our own property, and that would reduce the need to get raise so much money, wouldn't it? Because a huge amount of the money in campaigns just goes to radio and TV ads. So you're saying restore a lot of the uh, public service yeah. requirements that wouldn't, we used to have. Yeah, wouldn't radio. it be wouldn't it be a libertarian principle that if you own property, you should have some reasonable control over it? 
Well, if you collectively own properly, like the commons, you know, like, you know, we should have some control over our property. We own, the people of America own one third of America, the public lands. Now, some people may not like the idea of public lands, but as long as we own it, we should have some uh, control over how it's disposed of and used, and we don't. Can I sell my share? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So uh, as we close here, you were talking yeah. about uh, these, you know, benefits that largely are handed to big corporations, uh, in even groups, as Tim Carney pointed out, the Small Business Administration is increasingly yeah. handing out benefits to uh, big corporations. What are agencies, uh, departments that you think get rid of and replace with nothing? Well, uh, it would more shrinking. I would shrink the Pentagon, the Department of Commerce, Department of Agriculture, the Department of Interior. Uh, I would shrink the Federal Reserve. Uh, first of all, I think they're for us too over-bureaucratic and they're too overreaching. Uh, a, a lot of these departments and agencies, if you ask what's their purpose, it's to concentrate power in the hands of fewer giant corporations. That's their principal purpose. Look how few prime defense contractors there are under the tutelage of the Pentagon. We're down to about five, Lockheed Martin and, you know, uh, Boeing, and it seems General like they, Dynamics. It seems like they only advertise in Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, like right? on WTOP. I think the bottom line of this wonderful discussion we're starting to have in this country as a result of my book, Unstoppable, is ideology is very motivating. And there are a lot of things you can say about ideology, like – People say, I'm a right wing, I'm, I'm lefty, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Libertarian, I'm a progressive. But if you take it too far, it becomes a mind closer to reflecting reality on the ground, where people live, work, and raise their families. That's, that's the purpose of this, is to say, you know, Libertarian principle is against A, B, C, D, but therefore, W, X, Y, Z, on the same ground as liberals and progressives. So let's focus on those, and who knows, we might inject reality into A, B, C, D at some later date, and we might not be totally in disagreement on A, B, C, D. This is what I want to convey, uh, convey on college campuses, because ideology is unbelievably rigid. The students come in, and they label themselves. You know. I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, right? And I say, don't close out reality so fast at your young age. And then I give them a lot of examples. How come Ron Paul can work with, <coughs> with uh, Barney Frank on the bloated military budget and empire? What? Ron Paul, libertarian? Barney Frank, leftist Democrat? They reflect reality. You do not waste the taxpayer's dollar and you do not violate the Constitution with wars of empire.